DOJ investigate. DOJ investigate. DOJ investigate. Next one is justice should not be late. DOJ investigate. 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 We're gonna get started because we're gonna wait, folks. We're not gonna wait too long. Yes. Good morning. Uh, uh, my name. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Lumumba Bandele. I'm with the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. And uh, my name is Daniel Sanchez, um, member of the Justice Committee. On February 2nd, 2012, plain clothes NYPD the officer Richard Hayes followed unarmed 18-year-old Ramali Graham into his home in the Bronx. Finally broke down his door without a search warrant and killed him in front of his grandmother and younger brother. Bronx DA Robert Johnson convened a grand jury that voted to indict Officer Hayes, but a judge threw out the indictment, citing prosecutorial error. A second jury then refused to reindict him. The Department of Justice and U.S. Attorney's Office have the power to take over the case and hold Romali's killer accountable. We are here today to demand that the Department of Justice investigate the killing of Ramali Graham. We're here to call attention to the patterns of killing of unarmed black and Latino men and women in New York City. And we're going to start today by in introducing you to the mother of Ramali Graham, Ms. Constance Malcolm. Hey, good afternoon. My name is Constance Malcolm. I'm the mom of Ramali Graham. Ramali was 18 years old, was unarmed and should have been safe in his own home. Instead, he was shot and killed in front of his grandmother and his six-year-old brother by Richard Hayes. The failure of our local justice system has left the Department of Justice at, at least level of the criminal justice system to act a prom a properly and serve <coughs> justice for Ramonic unjust, unjust death. Given the facts of this case, we are here today calling on the U.S. Department of Justice to hold these responsible for Ramali's death accountable for violating his civil rights. The Department of Justice must be clear and de demonstrate that the life of black, of colored, our value equal by our justice system. We, we should not forget that Ramali was 18. He was unarmed, posed no threat to, to this officer. He broke into a home without any search warrant. Any, you know, he violated every protocol of the police department and he should be held accountable. Not just Richard Hayes, the, all those members that was with him that day, they also violated Romali's right. Richard Hayes might have pulled the trigger and killed Romali, but they also are accountable for Romali's death. And I hope DOJ take this case and prosecute them to the fullest because justice for Romali is justice for all. This is gonna send an example that you can't just kill a black unarmed kid and get away with it. We need justice and we need it now. We can't sit around and wait for them to drag their feet. They have to get moving now. Thank you. Questions will be taken shortly after. DOJ investigate! DOJ investigate! DOJ investigate! Our next speaker will be will be Assembly Member Karim Kamara, co-chair of the New York State Black, Puerto Rican, Hispanic, and Asian Legislative Caucus. Thank you, thank you. Let me first say that our heart our prayers continue to be with Constance. There's nothing we can say or do to bring her son back. But we cannot allow that tragedy of her son being killed to be compounded by the lack of justice. Many people who follow the news don't even realize the details of this. If you're not closely following this case, you'll think that Romarley Graham had a gun, but he didn't. You would think that he was running down the street, but he wasn't. When we find out the facts of this case, it's clear the Department of Justice needs to expedite this investigation. It needs to be exhaustive so that we can find the facts and so that these officers can be brought to justice. It's clear that there was something wrong on this particular day. A young man was killed before his time for no apparent reason. I chair the caucus of black, Puerto Rican, Hispanic, and Asian uh, elected officials in Albany in the state legislature. And we wrote a letter to the Department of Justice. We wrote a letter to Justice Holder demanding that an investigation take place. It's been two years for God's sake. It should not take that long to get to the bottom of the facts in this case. So we're here today both to stand with Constance and let her know 
uh, that we're gonna we're with her. We will not allow Ramali Graham to be forgotten, and we will insist that justice happen for his sake and for those other Black and Latino men that are killed at the hands of police in New York City and throughout this country. That has to stop. <laughs> Black lives are valuable. We have to stop losing our sons and daughters before their time, whether injustice is committed by police officers or any other acts of violence. Constantly right. continue to stand with you. We're demanding justice. DOJ, investigate! DOJ, investigate! DOJ, investigate! Next up, we'll have Rashad Robinson, Executive Director from Color of Change. It's good to be with you all and to stand with Communities United for Police Reform, all the activists, and Ramarley's family. My name is Rashad Robinson, and I'm the Executive Director of Color of Change. Color of Change is a civil rights organization with over 900,000 members nationally, and we've launched a campaign, a petition campaign recently, to call on the Justice Department to investigate. Over 25,000 of our members have currently signed the petition. You know, these petitions are not just pieces of paper. They're the voices and the stories of everyday people all around this country who want to be heard, who want our justice system to work for all of us, regardless of how much money you may have in your pocket or the color of your skin. They are mothers and fathers who understand that their sons or daughters could be Ramarley. They are young people who may hear about justice and democracy in our schools, but here on the streets, they understand that a very different justice and democracy exists for them. And at Color of Change, they are people of all races and backgrounds who want to work together and organize together to ensure that we no longer live in two New Yorks, we no longer live in two Americas, and our justice system works for all of us. Throughout the history of the civil rights movement, the United States Justice Department has had to step in when state and local authorities didn't do their jobs. And once again, we are calling on the Justice Department to step in now, to do a real and clear investigation, and to hold the police department accountable. It's what Ramali deserves, and it's what all of us deserve. Justice for Ramali Graham. We'll now hear from Donna Lieberman, Executive Director of the New York Civil Liberties Union. today because more than two years after Ramarley Graham was killed by the NYPD, New York has failed to provide any meaningful accountability. When a child gets killed by a police officer in the bathroom of his grandmother's house, something has gone terribly wrong. That's right. Yet nobody Nobody has provided any answers to explain how this tragedy could have occurred or to prescribe the remedies that are necessary to ensure that no family has to suffer again in the way the Graham family has. If New York City and New York State refuse to investigate, well, that means that it's time to bring in the Department of Justice to do so. We're here talking about a child's life, a child's life that was taken because of the color of his skin while he was seeking refuge in the bathroom of his grandmother's house. The stakes are very high. They are life and death high. It's time for the Department of Justice to investigate. DOJ? Investigate! DOJ? Investigate! We'll now hear from an individual who's been with this family since the very beginning, Andy King, co-chair of the New York Council of Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Council Member Andy King, and I represent the 12th District where this violence that was perpetrated upon on our community, on our young youth. Just recently, we celebrated the 21st birthday of Ramali Graham. And as I moved around the community, I reminded all the young brothers that the struggle is not over when it comes to how we are being treated by law enforcement. 
Even though we have passed the Community Safety Act, and I thank my colleagues Jamani Williams and Brad Lander for making it a reality, there's still a lot more work that has to be done. We're asking the Justice Department to look into this case. Why? Because we know that we were not treated fairly when it came to this case. Let's look back in the history of America. And I don't want to be discriminatory in any of my conversations, but the fact is, we know that America always has been built on a racial divide. From, from slavery on to today, to the Civil Rights Movement on to the struggles of Ramali Graham's case. So it's a reality when it comes to law enforcement, when it comes to black and white issues, there is some prejudicial behavior and thought patterns that does happen. We're asking the Justice, the Justice Department to take a look and ignore the color in this and just find the truth of what really happened on that day. Could have been my daughter, could have been your son, but the reality is that we all are one in this same struggle. And if, if America cannot recognize that it has an ugly hair of bigotry and bias in it, then we are all doomed for self-destruction. So I'm asking, we are all here today urging that we have justice not only for Ramali, but making sure that the next brother and sister who's standing on the corner, who are just trying to get into their homes, or just trying to exist in their neighborhoods, don't succumb to the violence of the men and women in blue, who do good things, but we know that we have a few that aren't prepared to do this job. And if you're not prepared to do your job, then you should be held accountable if you make the errors. Because if you're in a, school, if you're in a classroom as a teacher and you don't teach, your child, teach our children fairly, then you must be removed from the classroom. If you're doing your job in IBM and you're not doing your job effectively, you should be removed from your job. You've got to be held accountable. And that's what we're asking for, accountability for what happened to our son, Ramali Graham. Justice for Ramali and the DOJ, we need for you to do your job and recognize that there was something wrong here. Thank you today. Next, we'll hear from Lloyda Colon from the Justice Committee. Good afternoon. I'm Lloyda Colon with the Justice Committee. I want to thank everyone for coming out today. It's been over two years, and still, Constance Romarley Graham's family have not seen justice. We actually work with, we're currently working with two decades of families who have lost loved ones to the NYPD. In the majority, great majority of those cases, these families see no justice. No justice at all. In the great majority of these cases, these officers are left on the job. They're not fired. They're left on the job to continue patrolling the streets regardless of the size of complaints against these officers and regardless of the fact that they've taken innocent lives. We stand here today because Ramarley Graham did nothing wrong. He was just a young man walking down the street who picked up his pants. And far too often, the police department uses the excuse, we thought he had a gun. In way too many cases, there is no gun found. There is no weapon. Where Marley Graham picked up his pants. We need the DOJ to send a message saying that it is okay for children of color to pick up their pants without being killed. We need the DOJ to send a clear message across this city, across this state, and across this country that the lives of children of color matter. It is important that the DOJ investigate. We're giving the DOJ the opportunity to do the right thing. Investigate Ramarley Graham's case. Ramarley Graham deserves to be with us today. Thank you. Can you spell, uh, can you, uh, spell your first and last name, please? First name, Loida, L-O-Y-D-A. Last name, C-O-L-O-N. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Council. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, hold on. We got it. Yeah. And next, we'll hear from Council Member Jamani Williams. Uh, good, good afternoon, everybody. Yesterday, I was at a press conference because some idiot shot a 13-year-old at 12 noon. Today, I'm at a press conference because someone shot and killed Molly Graham. The primary difference is here, the person who shot Molly Graham was paid and trained to 
to protect for Molly Graham. I, it, it boggles my mind that we have gotten no justice on Molly Graham. I repeatedly said, this is the case that we're supposed to win. Tell her. It used to be, uh, I thought he had a gun, his belt buckles shined in the sun, in Florida he had some skittles, he made a mistake. Now the bar is, you don't even need a bar. Let's talk about what happened, I'm sure it's been discussed. They straight up kicked open his door to his house, ran in the bathroom, shot him in front of his grandmother and his six-year-old brother, dead with no gun. You don't even gotta say nothing anymore. You could just run up in the house and shoot somebody dead. And I understand there are people who say, well, it was just a black kid, so maybe it doesn't really matter. We reject that continually and always. But Marley's Graham life is just as important as any other American in this country, period. That's right. That's right. We cannot allow people to be able to kick open your door. You're so afraid of what's on the other side of the door that you don't wait for backup, you kick the damn door open. The only thing that would be best if it's where Molly Graham could stand right here next to his mom. You cannot deliver that. You should at least, at minimum, deliver justice. If the DOJ does not come in here and investigate and deliver justice, you are giving carte blanche to anyone, anywhere, to kill any black child and not even have to excuse why it's done. Just kick open the door and shoot him dead and say, my bad, and go back to work. There is no other profession that you can kill someone and say, I thought, and still keep your job. You should not be able to say, I thought, That's it was right. wrong, somebody died, and nothing happened. All we are asking for here is accountability, and we are going to continue to shout and scream for that. And I have to say thank you to the, we should be thanking the entire New York City for not taking over the streets until this happened. Shout for not bawling out in anger and knocking everything down in their way in anger. We should say thank you to the young black males in this city for not causing destruction That's on right. this case. That's right. But something needs to be done soon. Because this is the case. This is the one. If there ever was a case, we got to win this one. How the hell are we going to win the other ones if we can't win this one? DOJ, investigate! DOJ, investigate! DOJ, investigate! DOJ, investigate! Now, we'll now hear from Councilwoman Inez Barron. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Councilmember Inez Barron, and I'm here today with all of those who have called for this rally and protest to lend my voice. Unfortunately, this is another case, but we can't let this be just another case. I don't know how many of you remember Randolph Evans. How many people? Raise your hands. Not enough hands are up. Not enough hands are up. He was 13 years old, in the hallway going into his own home, had no weapon, had no Skittles, had nothing. And police officers shot him point blank dead. I believe it was 1982 <coughs> or thereabouts. This society is riddled with racist That's true. behavior, and racist policies. That's true. We have got to demand an end, and we've got to take the actions that we need to bring an end to police officers killing innocent black youth. I'm calling on President Barack Obama. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. President Barack Obama, a black man uh -oh. who identifies as black, who is the head of this nation, and has all kinds of executive powers to demand that the DOG open an investigation today. I'm demanding that he do that. It's been more than two years. And whatever the outcome is going to be, that's not going to lessen the pain that this family feels. 
but it's an obligation. It's an obligation, it's a responsibility that the president has to let all of the citizens of New York and across the nation know that our black children are just as important as anyone else's child. Amen. And we're demanding an investigation, and I'm going to put my letter in the mail to the president today. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Council Member Rosie Mendez. Doesn't matter if you're black or Latino or Asian or gay, hatred and bigotry is alive in New York City. Yes, it is. And we will not be able to stop racial violence in this city until we stop it within our own police department. Because for those who are supposed to protect us, that they would follow us and kill a youth in their own home, and years later we still do not have justice, then it is incumbent upon the federal government to step up. So on behalf of the Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus, on behalf of the city council, and on behalf of every minority group, we demand that the Department of Justice do an investigation and bring violation of civil rights in the case of, Marley Gra of Ramali Graham so that his family and this city can have some peace of mind because every one of us can be Ramali Graham right. in this city. Right. Thank, you. Right. Thank you. We will now hear from Pastor Q English. So this week is Holy Week. And we're dealing with something grossly unholy and unrighteous. As something that is deep-seated in racism clearly and blatantly. I'm very heavy at heart right now that we're fighting for something that should be a right. And that is justice for Ramali Graham. I stood here thinking that in just a matter of weeks, we're coming upon Mother's Day. And we standing here will have our children to embrace, hugs to exchange, cards to be given, love to be expressed, while my sister will not have that opportunity with Ramallah. The worst thing right now is that after two years, we're still here, in the same place, fighting for the same reason. And I would dare to say that if the color of his skin That's right. was any different, That's right. we would not be standing here. Make a claim. There would not be a need for a grand jury. There would be time in court, and it would have been done quickly. Things have to change. And as you have heard others say, that if we don't win this for him, we are in for the worst ride of our life as a city. But I think us standing here are saying that we're not going to go away until justice has been served. So we will continually, on behalf of the New York City Clergy Roundtable and the Bronx Clergy Roundtable, will continually keep this family in prayer. But just remember on Mother's Day that this is one mother that will be without a child. God bless. DOJ, investigate! DOJ, investigate! We will now have Q&A. Um, any questions uh, regarding the case specifically go to the attorney. Please uh, state your name, the publication, then who your question is for. Sure. Uh, it's uh, Ozzy Tabor with Capital New York. And the question is for uh, Councilman Giovanni Williams or any of the elected officials. Why isn't the, uh, the city's uh, new inspector general for the NYPD, is that person investigating this case? Have you tried reaching City Hall to get them involved? 
Uh, so I would say uh, officially no, we haven't. But I also would say the Inspector General doesn't generally look at uh, specific cases. The, the way he set up is to look at uh, general practice and policies. So we can ask to look at practice and policies of shootings, particularly where shootings um, didn't uh, produce a weapon for the person that was killed. So that can be a part of a, a grander a grander ask. But one specific case wouldn't be something that the IG would look at. Uh, Before we continue, pardon me, I just want to properly introduce Royce Russell, the family's attorney. I just want to say uh, I want to thank everyone, all the politicians, all the assembly people, all of the organizations and groups that are standing out here on behalf and in support of uh, Connie, as we call her, uh, Mrs. Malcolm, because it's important. As an attorney that practiced in this area, trying to litigate cases where our young men and women of color are killed by police officers, we really don't have this support because not because people do not want to support because it's just so many it happens so often and you can't be everywhere at, at every time so i want to thank everyone for coming in today i'm humbled by the experience what we ask for here and what we've been asking for throughout the duration of this case is that some integrity is brought back to the city some integrity is brought back to the justice system some integrity is brought back to the name Ramali Graham. Some integrity is brought back so we as people of citizens of New York and the state of New York can walk at least halfway with our, held high, our head held high. You know, it is amazing how you know, America criticized uh, youths for holding their heads low, for wearing their pants low. And here we have an instance where someone decides to lift up their pants, stand up right, walk straight, walk into their home and they're walking no longer. I believe in that the, the wheels of justice spin slowly, but they have to move. And right now, we see no movement. Thank you. Thank you. From news from the Bronx, I'm curious if anyone has spoken to anyone in this I'm going to why we got a federal statute on the code of law. It's not this important. I got to go over here and ask the question. This is not the right place to ask the question. Why is the Justice Department enforcing the federal provisions on the code of law? That's my question. Well, I think you're accurate in that over the eight or nine months, they have been saying the same thing. And as to a timetable, we have not been given a timetable. We are awaiting with open arms, uh, willing to speak to uh, the Department of Justice, and we're looking for <coughs> them to move on I this case. I was also wondering, Constance, obviously, Why you say that? Birthday, you you this this task force Can you tell us what you did this weekend and what it was like? Well, yes, for Molly Burton, it was on Saturday. And it was very hard because, you know, I have three kids and one is missing. And the one that's missing, that was his birthday. So my day was spent at the cemetery. That's where I was. And um, after that, we went back to the house with my mom and my son and my daughter. Because that's, oh, that's all we know. It was just us. It was just us. And he's not here. And he should he should have been here. All because of one person's carelessness. In New York, Constance, can I just ask you? I know that um, after all of this happened, um, the NYPD came under a lot of fire for the st policies of stop and frisk and all of that. Or Marley became a little bit of a poster child for that as well. Um, do you find, you know, that 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 all of that was a small win, or you know, is it just simply not enough? Let me speak to that. Um, when you use the word win, win would be, and, and I don't fault you for it, but if we're going to use that word, win would be having an indictment here today. That would be a win. We want to be a poster child for that. Uh, as a matter of fact, we prefer to have no posters That's and right. no children That's on right. any posters. Yeah. But right. if we're going to walk that walk, let's once again have integrity. Let's finish the marathon. Let's just don't tie up the shoes and take photo ops. Let's run the race. And that's what we're here today for. 
and that's what we will be here until something is done. <coughs> Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much. But before we close out, I do want to acknowledge uh, three other elected officials that are here: Senator Ruth Haskell Thompson, uh, Council Member Lori Combo, and Assembly Assembly Member for Charter. Senator Thompson represents an area. Yes. May I ask you a question? May I ask you a question? Question here. Senator Thompson will make a statement. I know you've heard from all of us to talk about why we're here today, but the only thing that we're here for is justice for this family. I sat in the police station with other elected officials while the commander explained to us what he thought the situation was. And upstairs, being interrogated for 10 hours without medication, without water, without respect, was the grandmother. And the whole police department conspired against this family and made this innocent woman sit through this painful situation, intimidating her into making statements or failure to make statements that would have exonerated her grandson. We want justice for Ramali Graham. That's why we're here and for nothing else. DOJ, investigate! DOJ, investigate! DOJ, investigate! Thank you all for coming out.